What's up everybody, I'm Trip Smith and I'm about to give you an overview walkthrough of my IPV14 skiff. This is a 2013 model that I purchased a little less than a year ago and I did a lot of work to her, spruced her up some and I really like how she turned out and I have a lot of people asking questions about, hey Trip, we want a video just of the skiff, show us the layout, how things are set up, so that's what this is going to be. I kind of purpose built this or designed this for what I do. Now I do like overnight camping trips, like last night I slept on the boat, on the deck, uh, kind of right here at this spring, at Cypress Spring. But I've also done some, you know, 150 plus mile trips, uh, multi-day trips on the boat. And one of my main goals was to keep the boat simple. Uh, don't make it too complex, not with a lot of electrical systems and a lot of stuff in the way. I wanted it nice and sleek and clean and lightweight. So that's kind of how I designed my build. It is meant to be a fishing boat, but you know, I kind of used it as just a little hot rod to get me around places. And it worked really well for that. So I was really going for a good clean layout where everything kind of had its own place and was out of the way. And this is basically how the boat would be set up when I'm underway. Other than sometimes I may have my cooler, depending on how much gear I'm, I'm carrying. I could have my cooler sitting in front of uh, this little console here. Or most of the time I have it inside. Now whenever the boat is operating, this is how I am, just right here, standing here steering, or either sitting nice and comfortable on these super awesome cushions. This grab bar really comes in handy, and then also right here in front of me I have this little kind of a glove box slash center console storage area that can drain and stuff that really I keep my cell phone and just uh, sunblock and just odds and ends that I'm trying to get to uh, often uh, while I'm underway. If you ever carry a passenger, this center seat is pretty good for that. You got kind of a backrest here. There are days when I take my family out. That's me, my wife, and my two little boys. And my wife will sit here with one of my boys uh, sitting in front of her. And then, you know, generally my oldest will sit back here beside me. And he's just standing up with me or sitting down with me and just enjoying every minute of it. Now, the boat does pretty well uh, with, with the four of us. I really, I mean, you can't really tell much of a difference in the four and the one. I mean, really and truly on how it handles and stuff. But it does fantastic with just one person or two adults. You probably could handle three adults on here, although you, know, you need to be friendly. But you know, other than that, you know, the boat can handle it. For power, I've got a 25 horsepower two-stroke Mercury on here. Fantastic motor. Love the motor. And I've got a Carbon Marine tiller handle that is super nice. It's pricey, but it's very, very nice. And all that is set up on an on-the-fly jack plate. I can sit here while I'm underway or not and lower the motor right here pretty quickly. It's pretty nice. And then you can you can raise it back up in the exact same fashion. On my old boat, I had a power tilt and trim, and I wanted to try this out so I could have something more simple uh, because if I do multi-day trips and my battery were to go dead, uh, that wouldn't be good. So I've really, really enjoyed having that just manual jack plate adjustment. It's it's very nice and like I said I wanted something simple and that is about as simple of a complex system as you can get. Now under this deck where I'm sitting I have a brand new uh, six gallon fuel tank and I also I have all of my electrical stuff right over here. This is my panel it's a Blue Seas uh, fully submersible uh, waterproof switch panel and I have a, a master battery switch also a, some uh, USB blocks I mean not USB blocks but some bus blocks back there too. Now the electrical system is very simple. All I have hooked up to it is my bilge pump and I have an anchor light that is set up on its own switch and my running lights are set up on its own switch. So if I am spending the night on the boat, I can just have my anchor light running. And these are all LED, of course. Now I have three more switches that are free. So, you know, if you ever wanted to put, say a fish finder or a trolley motor, or a radio or something uh, else in a boat that'd be easy to do and also you know this is a very very nice switch panel I think it was like a 70 or something dollar switch panel uh, you know because it's waterproof and all I mean blue seas is top of the line but also it has the integrated breakers in it so you, know, you won't be blowing fuse it just will if you ever do trip something it'll just trip the breaker you just pop it back and you're you're good to go so you find the source of your issue I've also got a brand new uh, 1100 gallon uh, bilge pump back here that I just plumbed with a large line over the back so I know everything's going to be going out of the boat and if the boat does get swamped I have a wave come over the bow like I have had done you know I've got a bilge pump that 
will get the water out pretty quickly. You know, if you have multiple waves coming, you're not going to be able to out pump the waves. But you know, if you can, you know, take the one wave and then slow down or you know change your angle onto the waves, you'll have enough time to pump your boat out before you sink. <laughs> but this boat does have uh, foam flotation built in. There is a compartment right here uh, that is filled with foam. There's also one in the bow that is filled with foam. Something I'm a really big fan of that I wanted to have on this boat is some dry storage in this center cockpit. And I have that right here and I absolutely love it. I had the same type setup on my Ginu and I knew that if I was going to have a tiller steer boat that I wanted a center console with dry storage and I've got just that here. There's a lot of room in there and it stays nice and dry. Uh, so, you know, there's no drain or anything to that. It's not plumbed into the bilge or anything. So that is just simply dry storage uh, because for what I do when camping, that's what you really need. It's better than just keeping things in dry bags and stuff like that. It's so much more convenient just to pop it open, get what you need, and go. Now, up under the bow here, up under this deck, there's a lot of storage. Now, there is a bulkhead about right in this area uh, that kind of divides this off, and the whole bow is filled with foam. But you really do have a ton of space right up under here. This is where I keep my battery. I've got a brand new like 35 amp hour battery under there. Uh, you know, I'll keep my anchor, little anchor box, a fire extinguisher under there. But one of the big things that I put under there is whenever I do my longer distance trips, I will take fuel. I have these two gallon fuel cans that fit just right into that compartment. And I'll carry three or even four of those under there. And I'll also put like nets and my fins and uh, life jackets and my guitar, which is actually under there right now. A little uh, travel camp guitar. <laughs> Uh, oh, here there really is quite a bit of room under there, and it's pretty handy. Greeny, that you know, that area is not completely dry at all, but you know, but it works really well for the stuff that can get wet. Now, a question I get a lot is, Trip, what's your fuel mileage? You know, how fast does the boat go? Well, all right, I have tried the boat out in different uh, settings and stuff on the jack plate and uh, with the trim adjustment on the motor, and I can easily get 30 mile an hour. I've seen as high as 32 on my GPS. Now, as for fuel mileage, I get about 11 miles per gallon uh, at 25 miles an hour. And that's on pretty flat water, too. So I have a six gallon tank. I'll say I get about, I can get 65 miles. I've actually, I've gotten more out of the tank. But, you know, as whenever I'm estimating my fuel mileage for a trip, I just say 65 miles. And it always leaves me a little bit in the tank. So, you know, so if I carry six gallons back there and then I have can carry eight gallons in the bow, that makes my range pretty good. What's that, like 130 or 140, maybe 150 miles? That is really pretty good on this little boat. And that 11 miles per gallon is calculated with a full cooler, you know, myself, a full load of camping gear, and with six gallons of gas in the bow. So if you're going even lighter than that, you'll have a little bit better range. Now draft on the boat, you know, how deep does it sit in the water? I don't know. Pretty doggone shallow. I think they say like, there's a like different numbers, like six inches or four inches. I mean, it sits really, really shallow, especially when you get the motor up. I mean, it'll sit in, I mean, next to nothing. It's really pretty amazing. How shallow can it actually run? Well, you know, if you jack the motor up, you know, pretty high, you can, you know, putt-putt in really shallow water. But as far as like running, you probably run in 10 inches, 12 inches. I really don't know, but, you know, as shallow as you want to be running full speed, you know, you can, you can do it, but <laughs> it's kind of sketchy. You know, I have been, you know, skipped back across a bay or something, and all of a sudden, you just see the bottom right under you. It's like, oh boy, <laughs> you know, but she, she keeps rolling. So it's <laughs> pretty exciting, to be honest with you. But it's kind of crazy when you're out in the middle, you're like, you know, a mile from the shore, and all of a sudden, you hit this sandbar. It's kind of a punker moment. Now, all the upgrades and the work on the boat, I did myself. And I'm fairly knowledgeable. I've come from kind of a sailing background and a boating background. So, you know, I kind of understand the right components to use and stuff. So I, I used a gel coat on the deck. I put two coats of gel coat down and then I kind of splattered it with a kind of a light gray uh, kind of accent color. Uh, and then, you know, for this console, it's actually made of cabinet gray plywood. Everything except for the lid. The lid is solid fiberglass that I made a mold for and, you know, uh, lay the fiberglass in it uh, but everything else uh, this has all been the outside has been covered with glass and it was glassed down to the deck and it's it's holding wonderfully strong granted there are some uh, small 
uh, stress cracks and stuff around the edges, but to be honest with you, these IPB skiffs are kind of known to have a little bit of hull flex when you're going through chop and stuff, so, you know, I was hoping to avoid that, but, you know, I didn't, but you know, everything's holding good, and I mean, it's not going anywhere, there's just, you know, these cosmetic cracks that broke my heart whenever I saw my beautiful boat that I'm very particular about <laughs> uh, getting these cracks in it, but whatever, it's kind of part of it. You know, whenever I was you know, creating this boat or whatever, I wanted something very dependable that would take me on these 100 plus mile trips safely and get me home, you know, but I also wanted it to be light and simple and not very complex to have less things to fail essentially because, you know, that's what can stop you from a trip is if you have something to fail. So this thing is very simple but very nice at the same time. Really love her, but she is going up for sale. I want something a little bit different. I'd, you know, I'd like a four-stroke engine, I would like, you know, just to spend more money, you get a few more things like an integrated gas tank, you get more dry storage hatches, and something that can handle chop a little bit better. Yeah, that's something we need to go over. A lot of folks will probably ask, you know, Trip, what kind of uh, chop can this thing handle? Well, it can handle some chop if you're going nice and slow, really and truly, but you, you have to know uh, how to handle a boat, and how to approach the waves and stuff, because it, it, it will swamp. <laughs> it certainly will swamp, uh, but just... Just be careful. You can go back and watch some of the videos where I have been in some decent chop, uh, and, and you can kind of see how it reacts. But you know, you're, you're not going to be going full speed through uh, mm, anything over 12 inches. You know, from the trough to the crest of the wave, uh, you probably don't want to go full speed over it. <laughs> but um, it will. But it's it's a rough ride, and and you get you get pretty wet. But she'll handle it. All right. Well, that's it. That's my baby. Love the boat. Absolutely love the boat. I wish I had uh, plenty of money and plenty of space because I would not sell the boat. But I am selling the boat in hopes for something that will suit my needs a little bit better. But hey, if you guys are interested in the boat, if it's still for sale, which it may not be because I have a lot of people already interested in it, uh, it's $7,500. Uh, you can contact me at trip at tripsmith.live. All right, that's my email. Got a lot of memories on her, but I saved those memories in video, so I'll never uh, be without those memories. And of course, the next boat, I'll make some similar memories on her too. Thanks for watching, and go check out some of those 150 mile trips.